This is The Mungle Show. And welcome back to this edition of The Mungle Show. For more information, everything, jump over to mungleshow.com. We love talking about movies. That's what we do more than anything here on the show. And appreciate when people join us to talk about their films. And this time around, Marshall Curry, director of the short film The Neighbor's Window. Very excited to have him join us. Hi, Marshall. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. No, I'm really looking forward to it. First of all, I mean, we, ha- we have to say congratulations on the Oscar nod. Um <laughs> After watching it, it's Thank no you. surprise. But for you, I mean, is there still an element of surprise? How do you feel when you get that notice that your short film has made that small list? No, I mean, it was a huge surprise. Uh, I, I think they said that something like 180 short films qualified this year. So it is definitely not something that you uh, you go into expecting. Um, so, yeah, no, I was thrilled I was, uh, when uh, I was at home looking at the announcement. Same as everybody else online when uh, when when they called it out. So uh, very very excited. Yeah. Is there like a, sur- a surreal moment where you stop and wonder? Well, is there another film with the same name, or is it like a split <laughs> second? You're like, is is this really what I'm, I'm crazy, seeing? But I'm not that crazy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. No. Uh, definitely the moment before they called it out, I was thinking, oh, I don't think this is going to work. This isn't going to happen. This isn't going to happen. Um, but but. Once they said it, I, I, I believe them. I <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. And after watching it, it, really, it is no surprise to those of us who, who saw it. And I'm always amazed when I watch short films. Um, and after, you know, as a critic sitting through so many movies, I mean, I'll watch two and a half and three hour films that don't have nearly the depth and character development and power that you did in 20 minutes. I mean, there's there's well. something great about that talk a little bit about the, the hurdles of doing that though of not only just writing something where you have to go from beginning to end and capture an audience and move them in 20 minutes but then to film it what, what was the biggest hurdle for you in, in bringing that to pass you think yeah i mean that's really nice of you to say and uh, it, it was a challenge because the film covers so much time you know it takes place over 18 months or so um, and yet it had to all be squeezed into, um, into 20 minutes. So a, a big challenge was just thinking about how we were going to show that passage of time and, um, and, and give the story a, a, a sense that things were developing, but developing in an organic way, not, you know, just montage after montage after montage. I, you know, the montage is the, is the easiest, uh, way to show time passing. And so, it can be tempting to uh, to to just keep going back to that, but um, but um, so yeah, I mean that was that was a big part of it, and 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 was part of the original story. Um, you know, the 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 film is inspired by a, a story that was on the podcast Love and Radio that Diane Wipert tells um, about you know being a mom and and having a young couple move in across the street. And, uh, and she develops this rear window obsession with watching them. So uh, it, when I heard her tell that story, I knew that, uh, that there was something super cinematic about it. And, but the, the, that passage of time and, and showing somebody's feelings change, uh, it, it, was, it, was, it was one of the main hurdles of, of writing the script. And of course, you, you can't think about this without, as you just did, mentioning Rear Window, uh, the great Hitchcock film, because uh, it does have that feel. Uh, but there's also that just what we all get plagued, no matter what age or where we're at in life, that, that grass is greener syndrome, where mm-hmm. you know everybody's life is so much easier and I'm just plagued with stress and you know, a, a spouse that doesn't quite understand and there's all this tension. We all, we all feel that. And that was very palpable uh, in, in the film. Yeah, and in the film, you know, it takes the form of of a, a a woman who obsesses with watching her neighbors, but um, but it, it also, in some ways, is an allegory for social media and the way that we all get these intimate glimpses into each other's lives, um, but but those glimpses don't tell the the full story. Talk a little bit about your your cast and finding the right w- woman to play the, this 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 lady because she does an amazing job. Um, she's, she's so great. fabulous. Yeah. Well, it's actually kind of a crazy story, but, uh, when I was in high school, most of my career, I've been making documentaries. Um, but, uh, and this was the first fiction film that I wrote and directed. Um, but when I was in high school, uh, I was in some plays, uh, at a school, 
I went to public school in New Jersey, but but there was a private girls' school nearby um, that needed guys to be in their plays. And so they recruited guys from the from the area. And in fact, Peter Dinklage was in one of the plays. He went to another school near us. So we did a play together, and um, and uh, I did a number of Romeo and Juliet and Hair and Eccles and a bunch of plays uh, in my high school. And then when I got to college, I, I I stopped doing that. But I stayed in close contact with the uh, with the director of those plays, who was a teacher that was a mentor to me. And, um, and when he got married, when gay marriage finally became legal in New York, he got married, and uh, I went to his wedding as an adult. Um, and at the wedding reception sat next to Maria Dizia, who uh, is the lead in my play, was in some Noah Baumbach movies and Orange is the New Black and 13 Reasons Why, and um, is also an amazing uh, Tony-nominated theater actor. actor. Um, and we just struck up a conversation and I was just, um, you know, soon after I, I, I wrote the script and, and sent it to her and asked if she would ever consider being in a no budget, you know, short film that I was going to direct. And she generously agreed to, and you're right. She's an amazing, amazing actor. Sure. She can convey so much with just the tiniest details of, of her face and her eyes. And, um, uh, and then the, the, uh, the, her husband in the film, um, I looked at lots and lots of different reels and just couldn't quite find the right person. And, um, and a friend of mine who, uh, is a, in the business sent me a reel for, for Greg Keller, um, also mostly theater. He does a ton of theater in New York, but, uh, you know, some television and, um, and film work as well. But as soon as I saw his reel, I thought, oh, my gosh, this is the guy that I've been imagining. And what's crazy is that it turned out that they had played husband and wife in a play before before being in my film. So they knew each other very well and walked onto the set and sort of snapped into their into their husband and wife mode. Yeah, and it worked out great because their chemistry together, you do feel like this is that couple that has been married and gotten kind of complacent in some areas. <laughs> right. And you know, it's funny, you mentioned that you had done some some stage acting. Um, performing on the live stage, do you think that gives you uh, some perspective as a director um, to be able to, to guide people through? Because, you know, live stage compared to film work is a lot different, uh, but there's mm-hmm. still bil- abilities to, to happen. Do you think that's kind of added to your directing? You pull from that sometimes and when you're giving people direction? I did pull from it a lot. You know, it was a long time ago, but it really made a mark on me as a person. And in, in fact, even, you know, this many years later, when I am anxious about something and I have my anxiety dream, it's always that I'm about to be in a play but I haven't been to any of the rehearsals and I don't know what the play is and I have, I don't know any of the lines. And so I'm, I'm scrambling to find a script so that I can figure out what I'm supposed to do when I get out on stage, no matter whether I'm worried about, uh, you know, my children or about something related to work. I always, that's the dream that I always have is that I'm back in high school about to be in a play. So, um, it, it helps me a lot, I think, in, in talking with the actors. Um, you're right that, that, film acting and directing is, is different from, from theater. I think small, uh, small gestures and, and, and intimate things, um, convey well in, in film that, that need to be a lot bigger when you're, when you're on a stage. But, um, but the sense of, of being vulnerable and, and plumbing your experiences in your heart to try to find emotion um, that feels real, uh, that, that's the same job for, for an actor. And so, um, having been through that and, uh, you know, in, in, in those plays in my past, I think definitely helped me, um, helped me empathize with and communicate with, uh, with the actors who are doing that hard work. And it obviously paid off on screen because, like I said, it's a powerful uh, narrative and, and story that you, you have brought us. Are you going to go back into the documentary world or after doing this? Uh, because selfishly, I would love to see you do a full length film in this kind of, mm-hmm. uh, of a tone. Um, what, what do you have plans, you think, now going going ahead? Yeah, I, I still do love documentaries. So I, I have a couple of projects that are in early stages um, and also um and pursuing some fiction work. So uh, there are a couple of 
uh, television and film uh, projects as well that are that are that I'm developing. So um, I love them both. You know, there 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 is a lot of uh, difference between nonfiction and fiction film, but really there's there's more similarity than there is difference. Both of them are, you know, taking images of of people and and dialogue and crafting it into something that uh, that has a story and drama and and moves and surprises people. So uh, I found that there was a lot of, um, of, of, of overlap between those two. One, one uh, editor uh, told me something that I, that I uh, tried to incorporate into, into this, which was, uh, you know, when I'm making a documentary, uh, I really aspire to have it feel in some ways like a fiction film. So we we craft the arc and we you know compress conversations and and we think about the way that characters are introduced and and how there's comedy and and sadness and all of that um, I, I really try to make feel like a fiction movie when I'm making a documentary and with this where we're making a fiction movie I really wanted it to be informed by documentary i wanted it i wanted it to feel in some ways like a documentary not in the shaky camera kind of way but in the way that documentaries have surprise and 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 you know a real authenticity where maybe people don't finish their sentences or maybe their uh, you know their clothes or their hair aren't quite buttoned up uh you know smoothed out and and there's there's sort of an organic roughness to the way that the story is told that that makes it feel more authentic and more powerful. Absolutely. And organic is how this one felt as well. So yeah, the blending of the, of those two concepts really, really did pay off. I, as you're, as you're talking, I can, I can picture parts of this short film and, and everything that you said coming together. So it was fabulous. We know that whatever you do on the horizon, we can't wait to see it. It's going to be uh going to be strong, I'm sure. And again, thanks for your time. Congratulations. We'll be watching the Oscars and uh, pulling for you for sure. Thank you so much. It's really great talking with you. Again, that's Marshall Curry, his Oscar nominated short film, The Neighbor's Window, up for an Oscar this year. Appreciate him joining us on the show. Appreciate you guys hanging out with us as well. Take a small break. Come back with more right here. This is The Mungle Show. 